Hello, Victory family. Welcome to our Good Friday of our Holy Week streaming. We're glad that you're here with us tonight. My name is Stephen Hadaway. I am here with Liz Mendoza. I'm very honored to be here with you. Happy Good Friday. And I'm excited to introduce our special guest, Vance Smith. I am super excited to be here today nice. with the family. Good. The Victory family at mm -hmm. large and yeah. my family here in the studio. Yeah. This is a good time. Yeah, it is. It is a lot for us to think about and process. Thank you to everybody who have been a part of this entire journey. We have had guests every single night and some great, great conversation. But Vance, there might be some people here who have never met you before. Yeah. So share with them a little bit about what you do here at Victory. Yes. So I am the young adults pastor for Victory. So for 18 to 30 year olds, uh, I'm the resident young adult pastor at our Norcross campus. And I also help to oversee uh, our other young adult ministries at all of our campuses. That's so. what's up. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, myself mm -hmm. and my wife, Gabrielle, right. if you're watching, hello. Your better half. Indeed. He's taking care of two young babies at the house. Yes. Oh my God, they're yes. so cute. Thank you. They're adorable. Yes, they are They are energetic. So <laughs> As they're supposed to be. Good, yes. good. Driving you crazy. That's yes. what young two kids are supposed two. to do. That's two great. Two under two. Good for you. Good and you said there's three more coming, right? To your house. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's right. No news. No news being announced tonight. <laughs> well, we have a couple of things we want to put on your radar so you just remember that it's not just us that we're going to be watching the video and talking about it tonight. We want all of you to be a part as well. So whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or the website, we have loved the comments mm -hmm. and the questions that we've been getting every single night on YouTube. We have Denise. We have Back Lane, Mariah Mosher, Jocelyn. Uh, thank you all for being here thank with us you. tonight. We, we really love and feel like you have even changed the way that our conversations have been yeah. going every single night as we watch these videos and process them together. But we want to also let you know that tonight is is an intense video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's one that is as we're talking about the crucifixion. We just want to put a little bit of a, a blip on your radar that as you're watching, there's going to be some, at least for us, some very high emotions mm -hmm. as you remember what it was that Jesus went through for us today. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have some family member and friends that have been asking you questions about Easter. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can drop some in the chat, or maybe you have some people who live in the house with you that you would like to invite to come and be into the living room right now, because it is very, very powerful. I think one of my favorites that we've had all week. So go ahead and hit that share button on Facebook, yes. YouTube, or the website, even text the link to invite somebody to be a part. And let's watch our we're on the sixth night, I believe, yes. of our Holy Week experience as we watch our Good Friday experience. Yeah. 
another path and there's another plan if you can let this pass oh god this is my breaking oh god this is my breaking is there another hope is there another choice is there another road why can't you hear my voice oh god this is my breaking oh god this cross is bearing Not my will, but yours be done. And it's there in the garden that Jesus chooses to drink the cup of suffering for us. It's there that Jesus makes the decision to freely give up his life, to take on the sins of the world, to be the final sacrifice, to restore humanity back to relationship with God. But what happens over the next few hours is horrific. He's betrayed by Judas Iscariot, a kiss on the cheek. All his disciples scatter, they abandon him. A mock trial takes place where the leaders convict him of blasphemy. And it's there that they beat him, they mock him, they tear out his beard and his blood starts flowing and it doesn't stop until it's all over. Jesus is then taken to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, who offers the mob a choice of who they want to have released. Jesus, the one who's without sin, or Barabbas, the terrorist. And they choose the terrorist. So Jesus is sentenced to death, death on a cross. And they beat him so badly that he's unrecognizable. Then he's led through the streets of Jerusalem, carrying the cross, carrying the instrument of his death on his back. And when they arrive at Golgotha, Jesus' hands and feet are nailed to the cross. And it's literally excruciating because our word excruciating means the pain of the cross. A crown of thorns smashed down on his head. And he hangs there. The king of the Jews, slowly bleeding out and suffocating for all the world to see. And the truth is, guys, Christians um, kind of have a tendency to romanticize this moment, right? We see it in the, the Renaissance paintings or some of our movies. There's a, a good-looking Jesus, a little bloodied up on top of a hill with these giant 10-foot tall crosses and this majestic sun that's setting in the background. But this day was not picturesque. There was no hill overlooking the city with a giant cross reaching up to the sky. Why? because the Romans created crucifixion to inflict maximum pain and maximum humiliation. 
How did they do it? Crosses were placed on the side of the street at eye level so that those passing by could look at the, at the ones being murdered eye to eye. And there was no little cloth covering your most private parts. And it was no exception for Jesus. Jesus was murdered on the side of the road at eye level, nude. The prophet Isaiah prophesies about this moment years before in Isaiah 53. He said he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds, we're healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid on him. Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open up his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. He was sinless. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. When we understand the why of this moment, we can see the beauty in it. The beauty. Yeah, the beauty that this was God's plan, the plan to restore creation back to her creator, that sin must be punished and the wages of sin is death. So something had to come and die for our sin. So Jesus came and died, what? In our place. In fact, Jesus says this in John 12, 27. He said that this was the reason why he came to, to begin with. Like he came to lay down his life for us. That at the cross, Jesus took on every disgusting, wretched, shameful, wicked, unmentionable sin that we have ever done, that mankind has ever committed. In fact, later on in the third century, Saint uh, Athanasius, he said that Jesus, he became what we are, that we might become what he is. Jesus became sin so we could become holy. And he did it for you and he did it for me. Jesus even said so, right? He said, my body broken for you, my blood poured out for you, that he was rejected so you would never have to be. He was despised so you could be adored. He was beaten so you could be healed. He was pierced so you could be whole. He was crushed so you could be restored. He was humiliated so you could be honored. He was punished so you could know peace. He was oppressed so you could be free. He was found guilty so we could be found innocent forevermore. Only blood can take away sin. And Jesus made sure that there would never need to be another sacrifice because he was the final sacrifice. And today we accept that sacrifice. So now we can look back on the brutality of this moment and see the beauty in it. Because Jesus died on the cross in our place for the glory of the Father. Today we can remember his sacrifice and we call it good. This is a good Friday because on this day, the only good one did the greatest good that history has ever known. And there on that cross, Jesus takes one final breath and he utters a simple declaration 
that shakes heaven, earth, and hell below. It's the declaration that ages past had been groaning for. It's the declaration that our forgiveness even hinges on today. With his last breath, Jesus declares, it is finished. The price for sin has now been paid with God's very life. And with that declaration, Jesus gives up his spirit. So with sorrow and joy in our voice today, we say, it is a good Friday. What, what a powerful and a very, very sobering reminder. Yeah. This this is the whole reason why we wanted to spend this Holy Week with you is so that we just didn't go through these days as normal, mm -hmm. but that we really paused and take took a moment for the Holy Spirit to bring back to remembrance all that Jesus paid for for us. And I've already seen some great comments in the chat. Like Janice, you put down that your daughter said to you, Mommy, let's let's get ready to cry as we go <laughs> to watch this. We we were right there along with you. And also Rosie, you said something that just grabbed me as well on the website uh, about how it, it makes you cry every time you think about what Jesus went through for us, Hosanna in the highest. Mm. You know, this is, this is the kind of love that causes us to be willing to follow Jesus all over again and to sign up, right? Like on the first day when we gave our life to him. So as we begin to process and we continue to think about all these things together, just remember, we're gonna be taking some questions from you. I already, I already see a few in the chat. So make sure that you continue to put them in or even just put down what you feel like the Lord is revealing to you in this moment. And Vance, I, I want to kick it off with you, friend. Yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to at least begin to think through with this video is one, what kind of emotions were being raised up in your own mind, in your own thoughts yeah. as we watch that? Well, you use the term sober. And um, for me, that that's pretty much what I was, it was a sobering reality, uh, a sobering reminder of the reality of what Jesus went through, you know, and the crucifixion, you know, I think it's something that we are all familiar with to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, the cross is so closely affiliated with our faith and we all know the passages. And even as somebody who preaches regularly, like I, I preach salvation, I preach the cross regularly, but um, in watching that video and then even hearing Pastor Johnson's explanation of it, for me, the emotions are, for me, I, it, it's weird that I would say the word refreshing, but I feel like a refreshing sobriety, being brought back mm -hmm. to the reality of the yeah. price that was paid for me. And just, I think one of the things that I'm being reminded of in watching it is just that it's all about Christ. Like it's not about my good works. And I think that, you know, you get into a certain level of time or, or even work in ministry level, whatever it is, length of discipleship, and you can get so focused on what you're doing and your works. And, um, and it's not that we don't want to do good works and it's not that we don't want to live lives of obedience and seeking to please God. We understand those things. But for me, it was a refreshing reminder that I cannot save myself and that Jesus's grace for me is unimaginable. And I, so I'm, I'm refreshed is in a very serious, I feel like in sober way, I'm refreshed. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think it's, uh, this is what reminds us that there's no way we could have done this on our own. Yeah. There's no price that we could have ever paid, nothing that we could have done to have saved ourselves. It was, it's literally the grace of God. So nobody can boast yeah. or brag about it. So having that wash over us yeah. again, is like, wow, thank you, Jesus. Cause they said over and over, there is no other way. There is no other path. There is no other choice. Like there's no other way for this to take place. And I was just thinking of just the culmination of the ages coming together here. You have, where it was prophesied in, you know, around 750 BC that Isaiah was writing. And he's like, who am I even writing about? You know, there's <laughs> in, in, in Isaiah, it's just this person, this mysterious figure is just referred to as the suffering servant. But like, there's this confusion as to 
what this even means and how this relates to the Messiah, because it was also different than how they expected the Messiah to, um, how this was connected to him because they're expecting this reigning king. And so you see all this mystery surrounding it. And then, and then you see this moment where Jesus is, is actually at like the culmination of what was always planned and always prophesied from Genesis where, where, where God prophesies about the serpent and Eve's uh, offspring. And then you see now that Jesus is feeling the weight of this moment in the garden where this is why he came but you also see him experiencing the pain mm -hmm. of even anticipating the pain and how, man, it, I think one of the other things that I was thinking of was just the fact that God could have chosen any point in human history to insert himself into and Jesus could have taken on human flesh at any point in human history. The fact that he chose this barbaric time where they're just flogging and crucifying people uh, as the point to insert himself in, because I mean, if he came now, he would have got what the electric chair or That's you know something. Right, yeah. But like yeah. at that point, because they're not doing crucifixions anymore. Mm -hmm. But the most painful way to die ever created on the planet in human history is where Jesus chose to insert himself into human history to pay the price for our sins. Yeah. Yeah, it's those kinds of facts that cause us to go. There's so much to the cross. There's so much to the crucifixion. When you, when you look at the prophecies, the fact that crucifixion was prophesied hundreds of years before it was even created yeah, and then perfected oh by gosh. the Romans. Yeah. And that, that the, the scriptures prophesied that, that Jesus was going to have his hands pierced yeah. even before anybody had thought of that kind yeah. of method of punishment. Yeah. There's, there's so many things as we look at, even as Jesus was in the garden, as he was praying mm -hmm. and just saying, all right, Lord, Father, let, please let this pass by me, but I will still follow in obedience for yeah. you. Someone put down um, in, the, in the chat that I thought was, was real helpful that he was even just remembering that the passage of scripture says he would be beaten so bad that it would be difficult for us to recognize him as a human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. That's that kind of, of sacrifice. It reminds me of Romans 12, where it talks about that Jesus scorned the shame of yeah. the cross. Mm. And that's, that is some heavy emotion yeah. that our savior felt scorning, like knowing that what was going to happen to him, as Johnson mentioned, that he would be nude in front of everyone and yeah. beaten to a pulp yeah. that he, he scorned it. He's like, I do not want to go through this, which yeah. I feel like leads us to one of the questions that was put into the chat. So Earl Williams sent one our way that I'd like for us to go through. And let's all kind of jump in and see how we can process and think through this question. Sure. How do we navigate the weight of a sacrificial obedience in today's society? Because that does kind of motivate you when you see that kind of willing sacrifice mm. that Jesus was able to go through. It, there is that challenge of, man, what, what kind of love and obedience am I walking in yeah. even in my own life? So Earl, thanks for sending us that way. How do we navigate the weight of a sacrificial obedience mm. in today's society? I think we can even look to Jesus as a perfect example. Yeah. Because he prayed, not my will, but yours. Yeah. And um, I think to your point of it just being so sober, so, so sobering. Um, yeah, Jesus didn't want to do that. He yeah. did. However, all of the pain, all of the suffering, yeah. and I think we can dive down. We could probably just, there's a lot of uh, different facts and everything to that we could go over and we'd be here for three hours probably. Because yeah. <laughs> um, it was a long period of time. It was 36 hours worth yeah. of just suffering um, and pain. Um, and this was not, this was, um, this was no stranger to um, the soldiers who beat him. Yeah, that's mm. true. Crucifixion was of that time. Yeah. And they actually, to your point, Pastor, I think you said it earlier, they perfected it. Yeah. Um, so all, all that to say, uh, j I think we can look absolutely uh, at Jesus' heart posture before yeah. it um, and just be praying that, that we'd be willing to do it yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of a time when Jesus was talking to the disciples and he said to them, listen, if, if I have to go through some horrible suffering, don't feel like the servant is, is better than the master. Yeah. 
all of this, I mean, the road of suffering is something that we all have to, mm-hmm. to endure for those of us who have made a decision to follow the Lord. It's not all sunshine yeah. and rainbows. Right. There, there's real sacrifice that he calls us to. I remember a, a friend of mine told me this, and it, it stuck in my mind about what it looks like to submit mm-hmm. at times. That submission really doesn't look like submission unless it stinks. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, because that's when yeah. that's when it's really hard to do. Yeah, and so when we think about to your question, Earl, what does that look like for us today? I think we have to ponder and pray. Like, man, our Lord went through so much for us, yeah. and while we're not asking for suffering, yeah, we know that it helps to perfect our faith, yeah, and perfect our praise. So, if if there's something out there, Lord, that you might be calling us to do that might not be easy, yeah, let's remember the the model that our Lord set for us, yeah. Yeah, that's one that's not necessarily adopted by many, many religions today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and I think to that heart posture, I think too, to know that there's nothing that we could do that mm. would be enough. Mm. Like this is why Jesus went through exactly what he went through. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I, I don't want this to become action based. I think what mm. I love about Good Friday, or I mean, the ho- all of Holy Week, is just to remember and to reflect, yeah. and to know, like, my goodness, we are not we didn't deserve any of this. Yeah, like we yeah. don't deserve grace. We yeah. don't deserve freedom. We don't yeah. deserve just the love of, of, um, of God sending yeah. his only son, his perfect son to take our place. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and there's so many different on this day on good Friday, there's so many different examples. I'm thinking of, um, when Jesus, uh, when he was captured, well, one, what I love about the video is it, it portrays the stress that he was under. Yeah. Um, so that's like one just awesome humanity uh, picture that we could kind of fathom in yeah. our own humanity. Um, but then while he was captured, they actually went to Pilate. Yeah. And, th- and there we meet a character that kind of interrupted the story, Barabbas, yeah. who is the other prisoner um, that basically when the people said, we want Jesus crucified, we want him to, you know, to die because yeah. he's saying that he is Messiah. Who does he think he is? Yeah. Pilate was um, the man who was making these decisions. He was troubled mm-hmm. about this because, like, a perfect man who's only brought good, who's only healed, who's only loved, who's only taught good things compared to a man, a murderer, yeah. a bad, like, he's just um, a crook or a thug in, the, in those days. Yeah. Um, and the people said, we want Barabbas back. Yeah. Like, crucify Jesus. Like, do your thing with Jesus. Um, yeah. And then the whole timeline or the whole uh experience of just the crucifixion then like the beating and the scourging and the the carrying of the cross and yeah there's so many different um emotions and examples of what we could just dive into yeah Uh, mm, it's insane yeah yeah that's something that as we process even as pastor dennis was here for those of you who were with us earlier in the week and maybe you had a chance to see pastor as he was with us process Spy Wednesday. If you didn't see that, all of these videos of the entire Holy Week experience are found on YouTube. And as he was telling us his story about what it was like when he realized how much of a sinner he was and how much he had been forgiven, yeah. he's like, how could I not but follow Jesus yeah. with my entire life? Yeah. So while we process and reflect on what this means, mm-hmm. it's almost like a natural byproduct of yeah. us to go, all right, Lord, sign me up. I'm yeah. ready to go. How how can I follow you with my life? How can I think through what you're calling me to yeah. with my life today? All right, so here's something that I, w- I wanna grab from you, friend, that maybe you can kind of speak to as a new dad. Yeah. And we think through what our father was going mm. going through, our heavenly father. Yeah, man. What, what does it mean for you processing having these, these kids that are everything to yeah, you now, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it crazy how much yeah. your heart changes when children comes into your life? It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable it's the love that God unlocks in us. Well, what is it like for you now thinking through what it was like for our father sending a son? Yeah, I mean, I have a whole new perspective on the relationship between Jesus and the father in having my own son. And it's hard for me to really wrap my head around why that would be the plan. Yeah. You know, and it makes sense why the word says God so loved the world that he gave his only son because what greater sacrifice could you really make 
for me, I mean, all the details, the idea that this is the son of God himself that lived a sinless life and then to have his life, well, he laid it down, but to have his life taken from him Mm -hmm. as he laid it down in the way that he did is hard for me to wrap my head around because when you have a child, I mean, all you want is to preserve and protect that child. It's like a parental instinct. Yeah, like all you want is for them to have the best experience, not to curate a bad experience. And so for me, you know, that's why I'm glad we have the whole counsel of the word, you know, because it it even talks about that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And there are so many things that came on the other side of the crucifixion that it makes it make a little bit more sense to me because what the father did was he not only accomplished for us what we could never accomplish for ourselves, but he also through the sacrifice of his son gave his son a gift that he could have no other way. And so there was no way he could have a people redeemed to himself without doing this. We are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. The father brought a bride to his son through this. It wasn't just, okay, I'm sacrificing my son and he's got to go through this and too bad for him. This is for for everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, we also see, the word tell us that that God did this so that he could show us the riches of his grace and kindness in ages to come. Mm. And so like there are there is a present age that we're in that we're still, you know, we're still waiting on Christ to return. Right. But then the word tells us that there's ages to come where we'll actually see why this happened, like the riches and, and kindness of God's grace that we'll be exposed to. And for me, that's where the parental piece starts to make a little bit more sense. Why you would have your son go through something so difficult because of also what he's going to be able to experience. Because he went and he ascended back to the right hand of the father. And it yes, he went back to what he always had, but he didn't go back to only what he always had. Mm -hmm. He now has a whole church, a whole people redeemed to himself the the imago day restored like the people that he created for himself to have relationship with now can actually be with him for all of eternity and without that without his sacrifice jesus would have no bride Mm -hmm. not that he couldn't make one for himself i'm pretty sure that he could figure that (laughs) out but i see from a parental standpoint for me i think that it's it's a beautiful story that god has told and revealed and unfolded for himself and for us that he created us for him not just to be here by ourselves and then he redeemed us and restored us to him so that we can always be with him so that's great and i think that's that's how i process as a father as well i mean it's 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 neat how the Lord takes moments of our own journey with him yeah. as we continue to grow as people yeah. and even reveal different characteristics about himself. Yeah. So here's, here's something that somebody put down that I loved to our earlier question, the weight of a sacrificial obedience today. Don't be afraid to look crazy, to be mm-hmm. laughed at, to be thought of being uh, too holy or too more like Jesus than, yeah. than Peter or others are, are willing to lose in this world. And that was uh, life with Ali. That's, that was a, I love that comment. Yeah. That's powerful. Just realizing that if Jesus was willing to lay it all down, man, how, what a joy for us yeah. to be willing to be able to serve him in that kind of way. Yes. So also Kristen put down, I had never thought uh, about the perspective of God restoring us for the benefit of Christ too, mm. you know, as he was building his own bride. Yeah. There is so many different yeah, levels beautiful. of what mm. our Lord is doing yeah. that just goes, goes even beyond that. So here's, here's an, another question that I wanna run by um, all of us. And even for those of you who are watching, this whole point of the video was so that we could think and process, but when we get to April or summertime or fall, what are some things that we can do as believers to still kind of hold on to the weight and stay connected so that it's not just the Friday before the resurrection, the Friday before Easter, that we continue to think about and reflect on Mm. what the Lord has done for us. Mm. I know for me, 
what I know I'm going to be walking away with is just a, again, a refreshed sense of God's grace. I know that we understand the gospel is good news. And for me, that the sense of the goodness of that news is kind of being re restored and renewed. And for me, I feel like that can flow into every area of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but just being reminded of God's love for me, God's love for humanity, God's love for us, and the grace that he would have to put this immaculate, complex plan in place just to restore us. I mean, this was, like you mentioned, I mean, everything from Psalm 22, prophesying the crucifixion, all these things for me are reminders of God's love, that that this didn't just happen by accident. It didn't happen randomly. God has always had a plan for our good. And that good is available to us, not based on our performance, not based on how we're feeling that day, not based on anything outside of us receiving what what Jesus has already provided for us. So for me, I feel like uh, not walking in condemnation. You know, I think that a lot of us still easily struggle with that. Just feeling like, are we doing enough? I, I mean, I can think of so many thoughts of my own friends, young adults. Uh, one of them is this weight that we often feel to be doing enough for the kingdom, right? Once we are saved, am I doing enough for God? Am I doing what God wants me to be doing? And I mean, I think, I think that's a question that we all should be asking in some ways, but not to the point that it makes us anxious and, and yeah. it's unhealthy and we feel like we're always missing the mark. Mm -hmm. um, to me, this is a reminder of, man, no matter how much I do and, and have the, the, the blessed opportunity to do, it pales in comparison to what Jesus has done for me. And I need to focus a little bit more time on making sure I'm receiving that and walking in that and, and living from that than just trying to do things for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. I want to reference something that Jessica just put into the chat. This Easter and after, I'm holding on to the intimacy, freedom, and the power God offers me through his finished work. Absolutely. And that word, that word finished is a big deal because yeah. it reminds us that when Jesus said it is finished on this day that we reflect on, that means there's nothing else that we can do to help him along the way. Mm -hmm. It's something that he did for us. And it's not like that, that shame you're talking about of, yeah. oh, maybe if I feed enough of the poor, if I do all these good works, yeah. Paul pretty much slapped that around yeah. right in first Corinthians 13. Like yeah. you can't, you can't do enough good works out there, love and loving our father and loving others. Yeah. That's, that's what's important to him. Mm -hmm. All right, Liz, I have something that I want you to share. Of course. <laughs> it's because when we're talking about how we can reflect on what the Lord did for us, I think that one of the things that you do, um, even in watching the passion consistently every year, I, I feel like it's good for us to think of ways of things that we can do after Holy Week or even when, when Easter comes around next year, finding things that we're, we can uh, incorporate to remind ourselves. Mm. Like I'm grateful for communion. What a great reminder yeah. the Lord yeah. naturally gave us with that. Yeah. But when I heard what you did just a couple of months ago, I thought that is so cool. I think that will bless others if they would have a chance to hear about it. Can you remind me what I, what I yeah. was talking with you about? Because there's a lot. There's a lot. So yeah, she has a lot of specific <laughs> things that she does leading up to Easter. And one of them mm -hmm. is, is going into the Passion and mm -hmm. having that be something that you watch and reflect. Yeah, absolutely. So what he's referring to is it's actually, um, as we mentioned, the word sobering, or this is very refreshing or just super... Um, very front forward of the uh, way of thinking. Um, I stumbled upon this tradition of mine. I actually watched the movie, uh, Passion of the Christ. Mm. Um, I'm learning. I'm one of the very, like, I'm one of the very few who do that. Okay. <laughs> um, anytime, any person who I'm like, hey, like, have you seen this movie? They're like, mm, one and done. <laughs> that's me. Done. Yeah, that and that's me. I've had some friends who are like, actually, um, well, you guys are a little older than me, I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> you, uh, you watch it in theaters, which is, uh, that's insane. Um, that's and I funny. think for me, and this is in no way saying you all should watch this movie every single year. Not at all. This is just me sharing my perspective, my, um, my experience. Um, I do that because I think there's such a power in having a visualization. Yeah. Um, I feel that. We often talk about Good Friday and some touch base on Holy Saturday, and mm -hmm. then we celebrate Easter. Easter Sunday and I think 
absolutely is just a celebration. Um, but I think um, what kind of brought me to this and where I got a little more curious of what actually uh, occurred during that time, Vance, you actually helped me. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Vance Smith, he used to be only a small group leader. Indeed. I say only because <laughs> he's, a, he's a huge deal. But I mean, he, you were, I was you were, small group leader, you were yeah, for the youth ministry the as way well. That you were, yeah, for youth ministry. Um, the way that you just invested and poured into people, we led a small group together. Yeah. And he, uh, it was around Easter time. He kind of sparked conversation about how to remember and to reflect. And he actually went through um, the medical examination. Yeah. And you get, you, you, because again, it's youth students, but also they're high school. And yeah. they, I mean, they're sponges. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. so was I. I was a little younger than, than I am now. Um, and you, you sparked up my curiosity. And mm. with that, I just wanted to learn so much mm. um, of what Jesus went through because I think for me that just made it all the real yeah um, it made it it made the experience it made the word come alive um, I began wanting so much to have more perspective um, so the movie I watch uh, another tr tradition that I do and that I would probably encourage you to do first um, would just be to go through the Gospels around this time uh, and you get different perspectives um, this time especially, um, I feel like Jesus has, has definitely showed his face mm. to me more. Mm. Um, he's opened up his heart posture mm. a little more as I've been just diving into all the different, um, all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm. Um, and I'd, I'm often curious now, and even I'm so honored to be here with you all, just to, to imagine what exactly did you go through. Yeah. Like, Factual, or, you know, yeah, actually, yeah. but then emotionally, like, what were you going through? Yeah. And so in the video you saw, he um, was praying, oh, God, this is my breaking. Like, please take this cup from me, please, yeah. And but your will be done. Mm. Um, he actually, uh, scripture will tell us that he actually was so stressed out, he would um, sweat blood. Yeah. Not that, that um, there's medical terms there. Uh, there's a lot of other research as well, but such anxiety such stress um and then yeah i've a crazy person and <laughs> go through the medical examination of what it looks like and what it sounds like uh that jesus went through um yeah i think it's because it's so eye-opening for me and mm. so sobering for me to realize god really did love me yeah and to your point of he sent his only son especially as a, from a perspective of a father yeah. knowingly knowing what he was going to go through yeah and even jesus in the agony and then y it's almost a little glimpse of um i'm imagining uh all of the different thought processes that he was going through mm. whether it was prophetic or whether it was because just yeah the agony um anywho that's a little of my tradition. That's cool. A little sneak peek of what I do. Um, and I'm learning it's it's not often done. Yeah. <laughs> and I still encourage friends to do that just yeah. because I think, my goodness, am I celebrating so much more yeah. in my own faith or in my own journey on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Um, so long answer, uh, but that's just a little glimpse of uh, Liz Mendoza's quiet time <laughs> <laughs> during Easter especially. I think um, there's a ton of value to that. Yeah, yeah. there is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But to your question, like, how can we find traditions? I think the same thing, like, I'm actually encouraged, like, how can I do this? How can I have this kind of excitement or this motivation to want to, sh to see Jesus' face? Um, I'm looking for his personality in scriptures. Yeah. He was funny. <laughs> he, oh my gosh, like, yeah. I think if you ask him, like, God, will you, because the word is alive. Yeah. If, will you show me where yeah. your personality is? Because he's, he's very human. And I feel like I'm a broken record if you guys have been with me uh, throughout this Holy Week, but man it's he's so awesome <laughs> yeah yeah i agree such an amazing good god i think that's a really cool way to intentionally stay engaged with scripture mm -hmm. uh, and honestly to pull some of the best insights out of it asking questions like what was this person going through aside from just reading about the crucifixion reading any scripture what was this person going through mm -hmm. what was that what was that experience actually like? Mm -hmm. And I think I know I grow a lot personally through asking those questions. And uh, but just something as simple as like what you just said, him him actually being, okay, we see that, okay, he, he sweat blood, but that came from such intense stress mm -hmm. and Hematidrosis agony. Hematidrosis is the medical term. Man. And that was only, that has only been recorded 
a dozen times. Man. In history. So yeah. that's crazy. Uh, as far as we know. But that's crazy. And because of what he was anticipating and mm -hmm. what he was battling mentally. Mm -hmm. And I think being able to observe that and, and remember that helps to keep our eyes focused on the right things. And honestly, for me, it I'm always encouraged being reminded of the, the price that was paid for mm -hmm. me, you know, and the value that God placed on me. And I'm reminded of the scriptures that say that I was bought with a price. Yeah. And to look at that and even like what you're saying down to the, the details of the crucifixion. You know, when I learned that the scourging really probably should have killed him in and of itself and that his body was likely already going into shock mm -hmm. from the flogging and then he carried the cross all the way to, to the hill is like, mm -hmm. those are the things that I feel like I get endless value from from seeing the price that was paid for me, the value that God has placed on me, but then also just the strength and power of our God. Like I think, I think sometimes just like pastor Johnson mentioned in the video, you see these paintings and artistic <laughs> renderings of, of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, like, man, what a strong, absolutely powerful guy. Like, yeah. like uh, what you're saying, he, he wasn't just some dry, gentle speaking person. He had, he had personality, he had humor, mm -hmm. he had seriousness, and clearly he had endurance and strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that he anticipated all that and then he endured it. He saw it through. He didn't tap out. That's, at any yep, point when his body was literally shutting down on him until i mean even pastor johnson talking about him about it being maximum pain and maximum humiliation yes. that it's this slow torturous death where you're actually suffocating to death mm -hmm. slowly and to to see the the reality of man he was he went through all that then he's on the side of the road mm -hmm slowly suffocating mm -hmm. to death and just that that's what he went through mm -hmm. for me the the level of humility to come down to that space of just going through that pain and waiting having to wait for it all to to complete Absolutely. that it wasn't just an instant thing he's just having to sit there and be looked at and be laughed at, and be mocked, on, and then asking mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think Man. it's such a full circle for me because a lot of what you just processed, I was taken back to the small group Man. meeting. I just, you know, I think it made it so real. Um, what Vance is referring to is whenever Jesus was on the cross, yeah, the suffocation, whenever uh, thieves or... Um, prisoners yeah. were on those who those who were crucified their arms would be up and so they would actually have to push so the nails would be in the hands they'd have to push up in order to get a breath in yeah which is interesting i think as i was going through this this time this easter around that's to me made his words that much more powerful yeah. and that much more special to mm -hmm. me because of what he had to go through to especially say them especially what he's saying yeah father like so he's agonizing in pain just his bones are out of joint his shoulders open, are dislocated open flesh, open flesh elbows and wrists against some really unfinished wood i'm imagining this is yeah. not your pottery barn finished wood this yeah. is just splinters against flesh yeah. and then saying please forgive them for they are not what they're doing and then knowing mm. that he and god actually made the choice to give up his life wow so you know um yeah uh mm. the enemy did not win yeah death was <laughs> not yeah. um the winner here and i'm just i'm so grateful and it is finished yeah you know what's cool colossians tells us that he triumphed over the kingdom of darkness in broad daylight and and actually made a spectacle of them through what he did on the cross mm -hmm. because our debt was nailed to the cross and so he it says he disarmed the powers and the authorities and made a spectacle of them triumphing over them so it's like you see him going through this excruciating literally pain and this humiliation but in the spiritual realm it's it's actually the devil and the entire kingdom of darkness 
they're being made a spectacle of. He's humiliating they're them. They're freaking out. Cause they're because like, he's what? totally taking away all of their power, mm-hmm. which was their ability to condemn us and accuse us. The Bible tells us that the enemy is the accuser of the brethren and accuses us day and night. And now he has nailed our everything that we've been accused of has been nailed to the cross, mm-hmm. paid for in, in complete. It's, it's totally paid for. And so I love God. <laughs> yeah what what kind of human intellect could put this type of plan together None. and execute it a story woven throughout all of human history man mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 incredible and i some of you put some comments down that i think was really great about how you continue to process even outside of this week like uh jessica you had mentioned about how this easter and after you're holding on to this intimacy and freedom and power that God offers you through the cross. Someone Amen. else put down that they are going to journal and spend time worshiping outside of this. Uh, someone put down that they, that they, as a family would, I know you watched the passion, which I loved I you being able to explain that yeah. another uh, family said they watched the 10 commandments to remember, wow. which is uh, mm. just anything we can do to continue mm. to, to realign our heart, to put it into a place where we can say, you know, Lord, we're not going to forget. We're not going to go with the busyness of our life, mm. but we will intentionally pause and remember reading through these passages of the scripture over and over again. And uh, I, I do that as well. I'll go through um, each year, all the different examples in the gospels. And I've, what's weird is even though I've done this for, you know, since I was a believer as a, uh, in, as a teenager, I still find new things that the yeah. Holy Spirit brings mm-hmm. to my recollection and yeah. or just kind of says, hey, what about this aspect yeah. that you hadn't considered Absolutely. before? Yeah. That's really cool. what you just said, Pastor, knowing, because we've kind of like had some conversation about it and we've only touched almost the brim yeah. of what all has gone through. I feel like, yeah, yeah, we could be here again for three hours. We yeah. won't, but <laughs> I think knowing just the, even the very little of what he's gone through and we've unpacked it a little bit tonight, to your point, Pastor, the least that we could do and love is forget mm. Mm. is not forget the least that we could do is just remember yeah like that's all we yeah that's maybe not just forget yeah yeah and things that we can do to make sure that doesn't happen i think bless him mm. and that's a way that we worship mm. and so we uh tomorrow as we're talking about what it was like for jesus to process mm. i'm very excited about saturday night at seven o'clock we're going live again we're going to stream our Easter services on Sunday, yeah. but tomorrow we're continuing our Holy Week experience and we're bringing in a guest, Israel Piotr, mm. who is probably one of the most foremost uh, grief experts that yes. I know that does a great, he's one of our counselors here yeah. at the church so and special. helps people process what it's like to, when they're going through loss. Mm. So tomorrow we're going to think about what was it like for the disciples to process grief probably the worst grief that they had ever experienced Mm -hmm. in their life. So maybe, maybe, you know, somebody that could be blessed by that. Mm. We invite you to come hang out with us again tomorrow at seven. And then with just a couple days away, Easter is going to be a powerful time together. Easter services started tonight at Norcross at seven o'clock They're They're happening right now. We also have some services tomorrow night. If you are in the Atlanta area and you can't make it on Sunday, tomorrow night is a great time to do it. Here's a QR code on the screen that you can scan to see all the different locations that we have in the Atlanta area and all the extra services that we've adopted for you to be able to come out and be a part of as well. This is this is a time and the, and the experience has been put together that you do not want to miss and that you don't want your family and friends to miss as well. This is the, the best time of the year to invite a, uh, someone that you love, a coworker, to come out and be a part mm-hmm. of our services, whether it's at our Norcross campus, Midtown, Hamilton Mill, or North Cod, we are ready for you to come and spend this time with us. And Vance, man, we had, we had, I think our longest night so far because <laughs> really? it was so much to talk. I loved it. Great, great conversation. Man, that was good. And thank you guys for Happy to be here. putting in your comments and your questions. That was great. We're expecting some really good ones tomorrow as well. Thanks for being here, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 7 p.m.